let's next specify the boundary conditions. I'll go into Fluent. So here's a graphic of my boundary conditions. Highlight boundary conditions. Far field one is this boundary. So I have to set it to velocity inlet type. And that'll help me set specify velocities there. I'll say velocity specification method components. The velocity in the x direction is v infinity cosine alpha. And that turns out to be 50.668. And similarly, the velocity in the y direction is v infinity sine alpha. And that turns out to be 8.934. This is an initial guess for the pressure. We leave, it, we leave the gauge pressure to be 0. And then we also need to specify k and epsilon. Instead, you know, under specification method, we pick intensity and viscosity ratio. These are non-dimensional quantities, and so we can estimate these better than k and epsilon. Um, and the turbulence intensis, intensity, uh, I won't go into the exact definition. It gives us a measure of you know, how, um, the, you know, how strong the fluctuations are in the velocity, fluctuation in the velocity relative to the, the Reynolds average velocity. And 5% is a medium level of turbulence. And the turbulent viscosity ratio is the ratio of the eddy viscosity to um, mu. So let me write that down. So that's mu t over mu. And we're saying that the, the turbulent viscosity or the eddy viscosity is, uh, is 10 times the, the molecular viscosity. And it's going to be much higher. Um, in the regions near the airfoil where turbulence is going to be generated. The idea is that, you know, we seed it with a low level of turbulence and most of the turbulence is going to be generated near the airfoil. But we have to check that, you know, our um, solution is not sensitive to the, these, these settings because they're guess values. And so that's something to do in verification. I'll say OK. So I've specified that boundary condition. And then where the flow is going out, that's far field 2, I'll set it to be a pressure outlet. And I'll set the gauge pressure to be 0. The backflow, um, th these settings are if the flow is coming in through here. And uh, hopefully it won't do that. I've seen you know that problem if this boundary is too close to your whatever um, geometry you have. So if you push the um, the far field boundary you know far enough back, you shouldn't have to deal with the flow coming in, which is a problem. You want the flow to be going out through the outlet. And um, we need to check the operating condition. So the gauge pressure is referred to. Uh, one atmosphere. Essentially, we are looking, you know, we are calculating deviations from the atmospheric pressure. In an incompressible flow, only pressure differences matter, so the actual value of the pressure is, is, uh, is not important. It won't change the velocity field, and uh, the pressure field will be different only by a constant. So we leave it at atmospheric. And nothing to do here for the interior. And here, um, lower and upper are set to all. So these, uh, the no slip condition is imposed. And the solver will impose the, um, the, the appropriate conditions for the, the turbulence quantities. I should mention that you know the near wall, um, what's happening near the wall over here? is uh, very important and you're getting you're going to get these very high gradients in this region and I didn't mention that you know when you pick the turbulence model there is this near wall treatment and we'll leave it at the default but this turns out to have a huge impact on the ac on, on the accuracy of the drag coefficient that you calculate so that's something to worry about in the verification step for now we will just use the default standard wall functions. That, so at this point, my governing equations are defined. 
and my boundary conditions are defined and I've set up the mathematical model. Save your project. So I'll say file, save project. I'll overwrite my WBPZ file. And I have, don't have results at this point, but I'll just say archive. So since the mathematical model is defined, now I can go ahead and get the fluent solver to solve it for me.